affordable off-roader day, or maybe I should say affordable and not so affordable off-roader day today because we are comparing Case's $3,000 Land Rover to our $20,000 Land Cruiser to find out is it really worth paying five, six times the price for a sordid Toyota over a sordid Land Rover well, that's what we're going to answer today. Now, obviously, these two vehicles are not exactly apples to apples. The 80 Series Land Cruiser is a 1995, so really it's a generation slightly older than this 2000 Land Rover Discovery 2. And the other difference is something that we got to get out of the way right from the top, because I know everyone watching this video is going to think of it. Of course, that 80 Series Land Cruiser is very reliable, and these Land Rover Discoveries are historically not very reliable, and that is the main reason for the price difference between the two. But today, we want to focus on their off-roading capability. And we also want to focus on their value for money, because yes, if reliability is your sole purchasing factor, Almost without a doubt, an 80 Series Land Cruiser could probably be the most reliable car you could ever buy. But a lot of folks looking for a budget off-roader aren't daily driving these vehicles. And certainly, if you're looking for a vehicle to take out camping on the weekends, maybe on the occasional hunting trips, both of these have some major pros and cons, and that's what we're gonna discuss today. All right, now let's talk 80 Series Land Cruiser. This was the Land Cruiser of the 1990s and is one of the most collectible vehicles from the Toyota lineup today. People love these Land Cruisers and for good reason. They are one of the last truly old school, dependable Land Cruiser vehicles that you can buy, right? The 100 Series, everything after this got a little bit more on-road focus. These still have solid front axles, front and back. And uh, well, you certainly pay pay for that capability and that reliability because we paid about $15,000 for this one with 154,000 miles, which is pretty decent. Then we paid another couple grand to uh, fix the hood, uh, another couple grand to address some issues like a starter going bad, power seats going bad, that kind of thing. And now we're in it probably close to $20,000, which is about typical for an 80 series Land Cruiser now. This is a vehicle that people driving across the world desire because it's true they are phenomenally reliable there's that uh, saying that toyota builds a land cruiser to last over 250,000 miles that's 100 percent true i've heard it from some ex-toyota engineers uh it's built in its own factory and they are super dependable but like i said you do have to put out a fair amount of coin for that dependability now, when it comes to off-road capability, we are testing it out here on the trenches course in the Onyx Off-Road Andres Pit course. And these trenches are divots cut to the ground. And we're going to articulate the Land Cruiser. You can feel that front solid axle doing its thing, keeping us nice and level. And the goal of this is to take it really nice and slow and let the uh, vehicle do the work, not the momentum. Okay, now here is where we've run into a little bit of a pickle because the 80 series I'm driving right now has open differentials. Now, please note, because I know someone out there is going to comment it, you could get this vehicle with triple lockers, making it one of the most capable off-roaders of all time. But you have to remortgage your life to afford one of those today. Those are easily twenty-five plus thousand dollars in most cases. So the vast majority of Land Cruisers you're going to find are going to come out of the box with open differentials, like this 80 series, which makes heavily articulated sections a little bit of a challenge because once those wheels wheels are in the air. You're going to have to momentum your way out of it, as we are doing now. But even still, I'm going to give it a little bit more oomph. Um, open diffs are fundamentally flawed when it comes to challenging off-road terrain. And that's an advantage of cases slightly newer uh, Discovery 2, or you could get a slightly newer Land Cruiser 2 that came with A-Track um, in you know, every configuration. Uh, to really make these super good off-road, you have to spend the money to put locking diffs in them, which is not impossible, but it is another expense you have to be conscious of. There we go. Okay, so we made it through, but you know, we had to work at it a little bit because it's an older vehicle and open diffs, just fundamental limitations. We'll see how that compares to Case's vehicle out in those trenches. I had my center diff locked. Um, but that's, I had it in low range, but that's that's all I could do to, to get this thing up that, up that challenge. Now say what you want about Land Rover reliability, and I know people will, because that's what happens every time we make any video about 
any Land Rover ever. But the thing about this vehicle is that it's so much less expensive than the Land Cruiser. For me personally, the reason I bought this is because A, I can budget for doing some repairs on this, and I also don't mind working on things out of my own garage. I'm good enough at tooling on things, not the best, but I'm good enough to keep up with a vehicle like this. And I'm even planning to do an engine swap on this one, at which point the pricing on this will be pretty comparable to that Land Cruiser. But that's all really aside from the point. Really, the point here is looking at how these stack up as off-roaders, because that's, at the end of the day, what we're most interested in. And they are comparable in a couple ways, uh, the biggest being the fact that both of these vehicles have solid front axles. Now, one way in which my particular Land Rover and that particular Land Cruiser are not at all comparable is tires. I've got these crummy little street tires, low profile, I mean, very little diameter, and the Land Cruiser has some decent size tires, I think about a 33, but where I do have an advantage is the traction control system in this Rover. Now I'm trying to take this as slow as possible so that I can demonstrate the way that this works. And the four channel ABS system grabs brake on the spinning tire in order to get it up even when you're articulated, even though it doesn't have lockers. And that's not as good as having lockers, but as you can see, fairly easily, I'm able to cruise up something like those trenches, which is a test of articulation. Now, there's other ways in which that 80 series is better than this off-road, but that is definitely a particular case where, out of the box, this traction control system really does a lot for this vehicle. Now, as you may have heard Case mention, obviously this is pretty apples to oranges as it sits because this Land Cruiser is on new off-road tires. It's been slightly lifted, that kind of thing. But we're gonna come back and revisit this comparison in a few months once Case does the lift in the tires on that Land Rover and we'll see what the final costs are and how it compares to the Land Cruiser then. This is just our initial uh, introduction video. Um, and let's talk a little bit about what powers this Toyota out of the box because that's a very important aspect of any vehicle ownership. Now, this is an FZJ80, which means it's powered by a 4.2 liter inline six cylinder engine that uh, makes about 212 horsepower. Now, the best thing I can say about this engine, as you can say about any Land Cruiser, is its reliability. But beyond that, it's very smooth. And that's kind of where the really good stuff ends because by modern standards, it is is pretty anemic you know you don't notice it driving around town or steady state on the highway but when you're crawling up interstate 70 going to the high country in colorado uh this engine's working real hard it also uses a tremendous amount of gas like 14 mpg amounts of gas now we're crawling up the rock section here tons of clearance with this uh, lift kit these 33 inch tall tires really good visibility too great windows easy to see out of no concerns with clearance whatsoever very very impressive result um and you know in a future video we're going to take these into something much much harder than uh, the onyx off-road andre's pit course but uh yeah the engine silky smooth goes forever not a lot of power quite a lot of gas use by far the weakest link here in the land rover is this rover four liter v8 it's not a very good engine they suffer from slip cylinder liners they suffer from blown head gaskets and that's the big reason that I want to swap out this motor. And if you do that, you should have a relatively reliable rig. I mean, it's still not the best build quality in the world, but it's a ZF transmission. It's pretty sturdy, solid axles. So for the most part, the rest of it isn't too bad. And the other consideration is that personally, I have three other vehicles aside from this in my garage that are plated and registered so if something happens with this I've got options and that's a nice thing to be able to lean back on but kind of like the 80 series this powertrain uses a lot of fuel makes a lot of noise and it's very slow but at least it sounds good while it's doing it I do love the soundtrack of that V8 now 
this is definitely an area in which my rover's at a bit of a disadvantage here because I don't have quite the clearance being, you know, on small tires and having no lift. I don't have the clearance that that 80 series has, but there's some impressive angles with these from the factory, especially breakover angle. It's a pretty short wheelbase. There's honestly a lot of off-road capability that's baked into these from the factory, which is the cool thing about them. All right, trying lava lane in this Land Cruiser, a great test of approach and departure. Now, of course, we are lifted versus K stock. I know the comments, but we're gonna, we're out here having fun. So let's just give it a go. Um, good test of uh, all the angles in this thing. Now, other things you need to know about these Land Cruisers, they look phenomenal. Aftermarket support is pretty big, although getting a little bit smaller. Careful as I come down with my butt here. Pretty good, pretty darn good departure angle. And then we got this really steep climb out of here. It's kind of sandy gravel terrain. Oh, no problem. Good torque out of that straight six. Aftermarket support is pretty good. And we'll talk about my final thoughts in the conclusion. I love this Land Cruiser, specifically how tight and solid everything feels and how it really doesn't squeak or rattle apart from some crap I have in the trunk. I mean, it's just, it's such a well-made quality vehicle. And I really, really love that about it. Um, it's very capable even, you know, without the diff locks, the angles are good. Um, It'll, it'll take you most places you need to go. But I think my, uh, my closing thoughts may surprise you at least a little bit. Now it will be interesting to see how this Rover does with its angles. Cause again, this is not a lifted vehicle. Although I don't really care about this front bumper cause I'm gonna put a steel bumper on it and this bumper is cracked anyway. Oh, well, good in the front. Good in the front. Oh. Question is the rear because there is a good bit of overhang on these. Oh, you're about to touch. I felt it a little bit there, but not too bad. And now as far as aftermarket support goes on these, I would say it's not quite as extensive as, well, it's definitely not as extensive as the aftermarket support on those 80 series Land Cruisers. But if you wanna find parts out there for these, there is a big enough community that, that you can find those things. I mean, even LS swap kits like what I'm looking into, of course, lift kits, skid plates, um, I mean, a lot of it comes from a company called uh, Terra Firma. There's also uh, Lucky 8 Off-Road. I mean, there's, there's a couple different brands that do it, but it's definitely possible. So look, the Toyota is really the objectively better vehicle. That's why it costs a lot more. And that being said, if you don't really need the reliability so much, if you're like me, you don't mind working on stuff and you have other vehicles in your garage, then you can't really get a lot of capability out of these Land Rovers for not that much money. Now look, here's the thing, Case is right. Objectively, I think the Land Cruiser is a more reliable vehicle. However, it is worth noting that these are still 30 years old in a lot of cases, and without proper maintenance, a Toyota is still going to have troubles. Not to say it's gonna be more or less reliable than a Land Rover, but it is worth noting. I love these 80 series, I really, really do, but they have just become so cost prohibitively expensive in my opinion for a cheap off-roader that these Land Rovers make a, a lot of sense. I mean, I think Case is right, that is objectively better, but is it five, six times better than a Disco 2? In my opinion, no. And now I'm ready to get flamed in the comments section. But look, we've had two of these as part of TFL. Cases had this one, and then of course we had the green one, which we beat the crud out of, and it just kept coming back for more. And if you can do some of your own work, these Land Rovers are a heck of a deal. Case got an even better deal at three, but even five, six grand for Disco 2 is still gonna be half price compared to an 80 series. All right, well, there you go. Um, you can make fun of me all you want in the comment section. I'm ready, more or less. As always, this has been Tommy behind the camera case. We'll see you on another episode. Check out alttfl.com for more.